Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about alternative data a little bit more because somebody followed up with a question on the video on two methods for quantitative finance, which I'll link at the end of this video. You just watch the end of it. Uh, Daniel asks, hi Dimitri, nice video. Is there a name for this process of trying to collect alternative data? Um, I don't think there's a name for it. It's just collecting it. There's just different ways of collecting alternative data. So you could be doing web scraping, which is really popular these days, but back when it started... Uh, years ago, it was quite rare, and that was giving you an edge in the trading platforms. Um, and then other sorts of collections, like using satellite data, or I don't know, going around taking pictures, collecting images from security cameras, that sort of thing. It's just collecting data. Um, I don't know what else I'd call it. Maybe there's a term for it, but I don't think so. And then the question goes on to, in the end, what is your view on that? Do you think it can really bring an advantage for the AM, so asset management, an HF, hedge funds. Um, and then also, does it not get a little bit into what people would call quantumental? I know you made a video about it because it is kind of increment of fundamental analysis using more data than you expect from a typical financial report. The first question here is going to be, uh, does it really give an advantage to the firms? Yes, of course. Uh, that's how, if you look at a lot of these really big funds, uh, think of the big names, the way they're doing this is they're using data that nobody else has. So it's like saying, you know, I'm going to give you, I don't know, I'm going to give you data that has a little bit of noise in it, but I'm going to give you the, like, basically our revenue numbers for the next quarter. And so, you know, I'm going to give them to you a week before they actually come out. That's almost in a way like what it's doing, except for companies are paying a bunch of money to do that. Um, in the video, I hint I'm not going to talk too much about it because... For me, it doesn't come down to like, oh, it's just data and people just go and get data and it's available for everybody and you can go get data. Um, no, I think this is somewhat an unethical practice and I think it should be done away with. Uh, I know this is quite unpopular in the industry and many of the people I know would be shocked and flabbergasted that I'd say something like that. But no, I, I do think it, it puts kind of an odd situation where it's like, one, you're web scraping data from websites so you're kind of stealing data from them without buying it from the corporation. And if the corporation was selling it to them, like they actually sold it to them, that'd be insider trading, right? I can't give you data to one firm, but not give it to all the other firms. And I think that's where, when you start to kind of pull the strings on this, um, and there's a famous quote by Fisher Black, I believe, don't remember where I read it, it's been a long time ago, but he mentioned like, Funds make money off of finding loopholes and regulations. And so the more regulations we pile on, uh, there's often more and more loopholes. And so it's up to firms to kind of exploit those so that those get closed. Um, so kind of an efficient market hypothesis here that, you know, weaknesses will be exploited and that hopefully leads to them closing. Uh, this is one of those things where I just feel like, right, a company can't just sell data to specific people to give them an edge. So you scraping their website, I feel like it's just kind of a dirty practice. Uh, again, spying on people with video cameras and satellites and tracking like truck movements and things. It just seems very, very unethical. And for me, it's just one of those things where it's like you put finance and hedge funds and investing now uh, in that space of like tech where tech just doesn't care a lot of times. And also once like the cat's out of the bag here, it's hard to put the cat back in. Uh, I think it's one of those things where it's like, it's kind of out of the bag and now it's hard to track and prevent. And again, there's not... A, not a lot of funds, especially small ones, can afford to do it. But again, there are firms that actually sell this data too. So you could just go out and buy it. Um, as that's happening, though, I think that's closing the loophole more and more and more. So it does kind of, you know, get more and more efficient. But again, that's one of those things where it's like, I don't think it really adds market efficiency. I think it was just an edge because there was a loophole based on an issue with the rules. And, you know, that's kind of my take on the whole alt data thing. But talking more about quantum mental, um, is it like quantum mental? It's really like just quantitative finance. And I guess you could say it's quantum mental in the sense that if you're taking data and you're trying to apply it back to like the balance sheet or the fundamentals of the stock, for example. But then I start thinking about you get in this quandary, which is a frustrating place to be if you're a quant of what is fundamental, what is quantum mental, and what is quantitative finance. And realistically, I would say if you're just taking images and you're tracking, I don't know, how many trucks come and go from a Walmart facility, for example, 
and you say, okay, I'm going to make some estimates. So last quarter, uh, it was, I don't know, let's say in a month, there's like a thousand trucks that left. And let's say this month it was 1,200. And so I'm gonna say, okay, I think that's gonna increase the earnings, for example. And so then you'd put that into your little equation and figure it out. Yeah, that's traditional or tra like finance and investing because you can kind of do that. Now, when you start using statistical models to figure out like, oh, an increase in that is going to be X amount in profits, or if you're web scraping and somehow you're getting information on what has been sold, or if you're getting information on what pages are visited more. So if like, you know, oh, these really high end product prices or items are being viewed more and you're scraping that information and then you're translating that into sales are going to be increasing. Again, if you're using statistical models, it's really quantitative finance. So I would just say it's quant finance as a whole. Uh, the whole quantum mental thing, it always just rubs me the wrong way on. Yeah, I, I get it. You're applying quantitative finance to the fundamentals. But then at the same time, you're assuming that there are two halves. There is fundamental and technical analysis. And in my opinion, technical analysis is just garbage. And it's often just like, you know, like we're just fitting lines to dots and there's not a lot of statistical and financial theory backing it. And I'm not for that. It, for me, it's like a really dirty thing to touch, which is why I'm not a big fan of high frequency trading because often high frequency trading and other quantitative finance firms uh, will do things that are more like technical analysis, which don't have strong theoretical underpinnings in financial theory, economic theory, and statistical theory. And again, it's just, it's so hard to break those apart. And so I'll make a video here, which I'll publish this week, next week, somewhere around this video, uh, comparing credit risk, because credit risk is a lot easier to compare uh, traditional finance to quantitative finance. And I'll show you, we're doing the same thing, but we're using stats and math to figure out solutions instead of using personal expertise and financial theory. So we're still using the financial theory, uh, but we're using math and stats to essentially build models that work. Um, so that's kind of a fuzzy area on the quantum middle thing. But yeah, alt data, it, it would definitely give you an edge, especially if you're the only one that has that data. And if you can use a model to translate that data into something meaningful, which if you have data that no one else has and it's relevant to the firm itself, it's probably gonna be pretty easy to figure out, especially if you can get this alt data for longer periods. So if you scrape it for a month, you're probably not gonna get much information. Uh, but if you can do it for like months on end, uh, you'll start getting really, really deep insights into these firms because you can figure out uh, like an average value, for example, of a truck leaving a facility and what that translates to in like the bottom line. So your profit here. Um, but yeah, so that's my kind of my take on it. I'm not a big fan of alt trading or alt data here. I'm not a big fan of trading in general, but uh, that's kind of my take and that's what I think about it. And I guess it will give you some sort of edge. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.